All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a uh, uh, meeting of the uh, Sunderland Board, and we have been posted in accordance with provisions in Mass General Law, Chapter 39, Section 23A. Uh, first order of business today is our approval of the minutes of June 1st. I'll entertain a motion. Motion. I'll second. Perfect. We have a motion made and second to approve as presented the me minute meetings minute of the meetings on June 1st. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, new business. First up is the appointment of Dan Murphy to Conservation Commission. Jennifer. I think he did confirm his interest with a, a letter to you all. Um, and he served on the commission before for a number of years. And he had, we need, with Kurt's retirement, we definitely need someone who is intimately aware of the wetland regulations. And he handles that with his job at the city of East Hampton. And he is also an engineer, can read the plans and understand the stormwater calculations and all that. So he's, he would be an incredible asset to those more complicated projects that come to us every now and then, but also the day-to-day -day wetland regulations too. Our, the town of Sunderland is extremely lucky to be able to have someone yep. uh, like Kurt for the for 30 plus years for his service on the, uh, the conservation. And Dan uh, has been on the Conservation Commission previously. And if, if you read the newspapers about any project in surrounding, in surrounding communities, the one committee that's always seems to be going, being sued for this or that, or being taken concern is always the Conservation Commission. And we've been extremely fortunate to have a very dedicated group not only dedicated, but knowledgeable on the Conservation Commission. Dan, and Dan has been one, so we're glad, I'm glad to see his name back on there. So we have a motion, I'm um, entertain a motion to appoint Dan Murphy to the Conservation. And motion. that would be the, unexpen the unexpired okay. term uh, of Kurt, right? All right, so we have a motion made and seconded to appoint Dan Murphy to the unexpired term of Kurt Griffin, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Does that carry him through June? Uh, when, how, when does that, I don't know how much time was left on his. Yeah, through June. And then if you go into the next we appointments on right? the agenda, it would be appointing him starting July 1st. That's what I thought, yep. <clears throat> the next one's 30 years, right? I think it was a 30 year appointment <laughs> for him. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, Thank you, Jennifer. Um, North Main Street discussion. Jeff, where we stand? Yeah, so North Main Street, as you may have seen, they or experienced, felt, they have started uh, milling the road um, and they've put out uh, additional traffic barrels, um, high vis visibility barrels, so that hopefully that will keep people in their lanes and not swerving. There's signage. Uh, for the transitions from the paved surface to the milled surface. And we are working on setting up both a, a weekly meeting um, between the town and the contractor and MassDOT. Uh, and we're going to have an, another meeting um, probably the week after next uh, with the arborists, both the town arborist and, and the project arborist to discuss the sidewalk work that's going to be happening and how to minimize the root impact um, to trees of that work. So after last week, um, Jeff, Jeff wrote a letter to Mascot um, and it was an exceptionally well done letter. And it was. It well, it actually, it actually went through the contract and brought up special, uh, it brought up um, points in the contract that we felt um, needed to be addressed. It seems that that's how Mass DOT wants to communicate is through um, letters. Um, and 
we did. Jeff, Jeff, it, it was an exceptional letter. So I, I would, I would continue to say if people have concerns about North Main Street, that they need to uh, send their concerns to Jeff to select the, the select board's office. We will keep passing those um, concerns on to Mass DOT, and we will be also keeping our elective state representative and state senator abreast also, since that's how Mass Highway wants to formalize everything. Well, we just want to formalize our conversations with the Mass state senator and our state rep as well. So um, I, again, we, we are concerned on public safety. We're concerned on the dust. We're concerned on uh, someone not wa watching the project, even, you know, after a big storm. Um, there, there, and, and we also, there's total, the total disregard to our tree protection zones that seem we just, they just seem to do as they want. So anyways, that's what we're doing right now. Any, any other comments about the uh, North Main Street? David, Crystal? No, nope. hopefully they'll pay attention this time. Yeah. Hope springs eternal. Right, I know, David? right? Yeah. Hope springs eternal. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to be able to do it, Crystal. Get ready. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, employee and board appointments, Jeff? Yes. So um, it's that time of year where all the appointed officials, uh, staff members, et cetera, get reappointed. Um, and I hope I shared a memo. Yes, um, yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. Employees uh, and then boards and committees so effective um, July 1st. Okay. So uh, I will entertain a motion to appoint as uh, submitted. Uh, motion. I'll second. So clearly we have a, a, a motion made, seconded to appoint our employees employee and board appointments as presented in a, uh, in a document that was forwarded by Jeff. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff, on that. Uh, old business, COVID state, COVID-19 state of emergency, Lori. I still am saying zero for the town. It's a great number. <laughs> the last case we had reported in town was on May 5th. So it's awesome. It's, yes, it's fantastic. Um, still keep doing the same precautions though. Wash your hands, you know, just because our numbers are zero doesn't mean there's not a risk. So please keep taking the precautions. Thank you, Lori. And, and I, I would just, I would only add to Lori is, is pr please be, uh, please be um, aware of, of people that may continue to be wearing masks. It's, and, and, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, some, some of the frontline workers, I mean, they are dealing with, hundreds and hundreds of people every day. So they just may feel more comfortable. And just because you've had the shot and you've had your two weeks um, doesn't make you bulletproof as they say. So um, I, I just, I would continue to be respectful of, of everyone. Have patience, yes. And just a little patience, but we're getting there. Jeff, you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, I wanted to, talk a little bit about the governor rescinding the state of emergency on June 15th. Um, and we have a local uh, state of emergency that we declared in March as well. Um, and the, depending on, on how the, the select board chooses to have their summer meeting schedule, this may be the last meeting before the 15th. So I didn't know if you wanted to take a conditional vote that if the governor's 
state of emergency is rescinded on the 15th, that the local would also be rescinded. Um, I, we could talk about the implications of the governor's state of emergency. We'd have in-person meetings. We've talked to the Board of Health. Um, right now, the plan would be, well, right now, we're, we're not allowed to have remote meetings after the 15th. I understand that the legislature is looking to take that up this week to provide a little bit of flexibility in that. Um, but I think that our plan as a town, um, certainly welcome feedback, but would be on, on the 15th, we'd go back to pre-pandemic hours, um, you know, following the, the state and federal guidelines as we have throughout most of the pandemic. Um, with the exception of when we were a, a hot spot in, in the region. Um, so anyone who's vaccinated would not need to wear masks. We would be open during regular business hours. Um, I, I've communicated to staff that if people are uncomfortable or, or ask staff to wear a mask, that, that they be considerate that people might not be comfortable going maskless or meeting with people without masks. Um, and to, to accommodate where it's reasonable. But, but I guess I just wanted to give the select board an opportunity to talk about that and, and make sure you were okay with sort of unlocking the doors again during normal hours and, and allowing people in the front of the building as well as the back. We, we wouldn't need social distancing or masks unless somebody is unvaccinated. Um, you know, unfortunately we don't have sort of a, a front door person to ask each individual, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna do the best we can and um, staff has been vaccinated. So we're, we're fairly confident that we'd be able to, to reopen on the 15th. Uh, David, Chris, what are your thoughts? I'm just trying to think, is there anything <clears throat> um, that we did not so much about the use of the building and stuff like that, but like with regard to restaurants or anything like that, that we need to think about when, um, when they lift the state of emergency, like operationally, I don't think so, but I just want to, I was pretty would, good to check. Yeah, I, I don't think so because I think that was predicated on an emergency order from the governor as well. That would be okay. rescinded as far as the expanded outdoor dining and things like that. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, I don't have a problem with uh, taking a vote to uh, to rescind our emergency status. Also, um, Can I ask one question first. Go ahead, Lori. Um, with the rescinding of the state of emergency, does that have any impact on spending and potential applying for grants? That you apply only while we're under a state of emergency. Uh, why well, it, it could, but I. But if the state's no longer under a state state of emergency, it'd be hard for us to stay under state of emergency. Okay, just yep. Yeah, it's good to ask. Yeah, you know. But we yeah, can take I, a we can take a conditional vote, and uh, something comes up, we can always change our mind. Wouldn't be the first time. That's true. Okay. Uh, uh, motion. Uh, motion to um, rescind the state of emergency based on the state's conditions. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to to uh, rescind Sunderland's state of emergency upon the state declaring that their state of emergency is rescinded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Lori, we may be almost done don't with the EMD it. report. Don't say it, Tom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't jinx it. All right. Yeah, all right. So that being said, some select board summer meeting schedule. Jeff, you want to make that presentation? Sure. So getting into it a, a little bit later in the year. Um, but typically we go to a, a every other week schedule and I'll just pull this up on the screen. Um, so the, the proposal would be to meet again on June 21st 
Um, then July 12th, July 26th, August 9th, August 23rd, and then um, start weekly meetings on the 13th of September. Okay, and this is a tentative schedule. I mean, if we have if we have to adjust our schedule, we can adjust the schedule. So, uh, but this at least starts lets people know what our rough what what we're looking at for for a tentative schedule. Okay, David or Crystal, thoughts? No, oh, I think it's fine. That's to me. Would you like a motion to adopt the summer schedule? Absolutely. All right. Uh, but good. Oh, no, go ahead. Us. Uh, uh, um, motion to adopt the summer schedule as presented. I'll second it. We have a motion made and seconded to adopt the uh, summer schedule as presented. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, Jeff, we have a summer schedule. Uh, David, thoughts? Okay, so motions, uh, town meeting motions and review and budget. Jeff, have we had any changes? Uh, there was only one change. Uh, I talked to the police chief um, and the warrant article for the firearms replacement was originally $9,000. And he said uh, in further discussions, he thought it would be closer to $7,000. So I amended that warrant article in the um, use of cash tab in the spreadsheet um, to reflect $7,000, which gives us 2,000 more in free cash. There you go. <laughs> okay. That was the only, uh, oh, and then, sorry, uh, town council has reviewed the motions and just had um, a few minor grammatical uh, recommendations um, I think for capital projects and CPA projects, there was this, some additional language about um, related costs to a project that, that can, the funds can be used for, um, but no significant changes from council. Okay. So nothing else. I mean, you know, we've been talking about, we've had a, couple extra months to talk about the budget and articles this year. I mean, do we have anything else to talk about, Jeff? I mean, budget's pretty well straight. Um, we, are, we had a question about tax rate. You want to address that, uh, Jeff? Oh, yeah. yeah, so I, I spoke with the assessors and this year we're going through a, a revaluation of all of the properties. And so the assessor said, sure, in a typical year, they can give us a, a fairly accurate estimation of, of what our budget, what the tax rate would look like based on our budget. But given the fact that it's a revaluation year and um, home sale prices have been crazy, um, to use a technical term, it, it, it's, it would be very uh, difficult to estimate what, what the taxes would be. Because that has such, you know, not, it's not just the budget that impacts what the tax rate is. It's also how, how much the, the houses or properties are assessed at. So um, they're going to try to work on something before town meeting. But um, even if they have something, it probably will change significantly once the, the reval or will change somewhat once, once the reval is complete. Do they give you like an estimated time completion for that at all or? I don't know if they know yet. Um, uh, when I asked, I think the assessor said that they were going to be starting the reval this week and, and starting to review some of the, the recent sales and stuff. And then um, I think in the next few weeks is when they're going to start actually doing site visits and spot checks. OK. So, uh, I, Peter, that was one of your questions. So that's that's what we got for an answer from the from the assessors. Comments, Peter. Um, I just I, I guess I'll just point out that it it the assessment will change how the tax burden is shared in town by the different properties. It doesn't change how much the town collects. 
uh, with the reval. And so, you know, if they, if your own property may go up or more or less depend upon whether it's deemed to have increased in value or, or not, but the town budget basically stays the same. Yep. Doesn't do us any good. As far as no, Ryan say, no, the assessor didn't ask for my help, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I would, I would say that we know, we know that this year we have the uh, the library and the public safety complex coming off, and they were that exclusion vote. So, uh, so. I, I mean, we, we can see what kind of impact those had the last couple of years. Um, we know what that is. So um, I, would, I, would, I would expect that our just talking off the top, the, we're probably looking at the, the rate being reduced by at least a dollar, a thousand. But I, I mean, that's just a rough, but you're absolutely right. I mean, we know what the budget is. That we're lim we're limited by that. But it's right. just it's it, it's just how it's spread out. And actually, the the assessors have given you a proper answer, meaning that because of the reval going on, that you, you can't pin them down to a number now because they they just can't say yet. No, and we understand. And we understand that. Yeah, so that's a fair answer. Yeah, but. And but it's it's a it's a tough it's it's hard because we get we're we're we are we are going to go to town meeting and and there's 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 a there's three questions that are always asked. What's the tax rate gonna be, how much we have in free cash, and how much we have in stabilization. We know that, but unfortunately two out, two out of three you got. Uh, two out of three we got, yeah, we can do, but but we and we and we can we can give we can give a general number because we know that. We we understand that there's some debt exclusion that's not going to be reoccurring, so we can talk about that as well. Anyway, thanks for looking into it, Tom. Uh, uh, you know that's one thing we we uh, we apologize for. Um, usually, that's one of the first one of the usually that's one of the first thing that comes up when the, uh, the assessors talk to us about a uh, uh, if we want to do a, a single tax rate or or. A, a base actually, so, and and I think well, they, they probably did talk to us about the. Meeting. They did talk to us about we, that. So. We don't have math. No. Yeah. All right. Um, annual town meeting, Jeff. Yep, uh, we're still planning uh, outdoor annual town meeting at four o'clock uh, this Saturday behind uh, the town office building at Twelve School Street. Um, Preparations have begun. We have a, a sound team. Um, FCAT is going to record it. I uh, was emailing with Jim Ewan today about painting the floor of town meeting. It's going to be set up very similar to last year, obviously with fewer um, restrictions because of the mask advisory. So vaccinated people can sit together. We're not doing individual squares this year. Um, and the, the hope is that right now the weather looks nice. I'm knocking on wood, not, not too hot. Huh? Um, and yeah, so I, I, think that, I think that we're gonna be prepared. Again, uh, the significant changes are, are no individual squares um, and people are gonna be able to use the restrooms uh, in the town office building, they will be open. We're not gonna have sandy cans this year. Um, we are asking that people bring their own chairs again this year. Um, it, it's going to be outdoors. It's going to be in the field. So um, it, it was hot last year and there isn't much shade. So if you're looking for shade, I'd also recommend an umbrella um, to put over your chair and, and give yourself a little bit of shade. But that's uh, pretty much the, the plan. Okay. So we'll see everyone Saturday four o'clock behind the town office building. So, uh, and hopefully it'll be the last one we'll have to hold outside for a hundred years or more. 
All right. Um, select board updates. Crystal? I'm all set. Davey? No updates this week. Okay. Town administrator updates? No, nope. It's just been preparing for town meeting and, and uh, working with the contractors on North Main. I know, Jeff. Thank you. All right. Um, our next meeting is going to be Saturday, 3.30, before town meeting. We always have a meeting just before in case anything comes up. So, uh, plus we have to uh, we have to look at our books and we go through how we do it. So, our next official meeting will be on Saturday at 3.30. Our next Monday meeting, hopefully, will be June 21st. It will be live upstairs. Um, depending on what the state says, but uh, we will keep everyone abreast. And it's either gonna be on F FCAT or Zoom, but it looks like right now we'll be upstairs in our, in our meeting room. Crystal, I get three minutes. You don't want me to talk for three minutes, do you? No. Okay, no. phew. I motion we adjourn. <laughs> Second. She got that one done really well. We have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Uh, declare us out at uh, seven oh six. Thank you. <laughs>